Anton, you know, once you start, there's no going back. I know. This means total commitment. Once you begin the path, there is no leaving the path. Are you sure you're ready for that? had hip dips. Switching does not equate to having lost fat. It is not smoothie equals weight loss. Fat burner tea equals weight loss. Oh my god. It really changed everything about my boots. It changed the shape. It changed the size. <laughs> Before we get into this video, I'm going to put you guys on. I get a lot of questions about the hair that I wear to the gym. First thing that I'm going to tell you is don't let working out stop you from looking good in the gym. Get yourself a good wig. This is an Alphen unit. This hair is from Alphen Hair and it is a 5x5 closure wig. Now, closure basically means that it runs from here to here. It doesn't run from ear to ear. Ear to ear basically means that every single time that you wear it, you're going to have to glue it down. Closure, you can wear it without having to glue it down because it only runs from here to here. So when I wear my wigs to the gym, my closure wigs to the gym, I don't glue them down. I literally just put it on, have my melting band, and I'm done. So I'm not worried about the sweat. I'm not worried about because it's good quality hair. And this is a 26-inch unit from Alphen Hair because we're not going to play about the inches. Like Working out or not, I'm still going to give you inches. Period. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to leave the link to this unit down below for you guys if you guys are interested in this hair. As well as if you're interested in any other units by Alphen Hair, you're going to find the link and all the details in the description box. Thank you again to Alphen Hair for sponsoring this segment of the video. Let's get into you, the video. Girl, today we're going to talk about my fitness journey, okay? I'm going to answer every question that is what I ate, how I ate, to be able to put on muscle, to put on weight. Going from no shape whatsoever, to having a little bit of curve, to having some good looking thighs, some quads, as well as talk about um, fat loss. How did I put on weight without putting on a whole lot of body fat? When I first started working out, I first of all played a lot of sports um, all throughout my years of high school, primary school. And so I was always on the skinny side. So I started off at 54 kgs. That is when I initially started working out. When I first started training, when I say training, I mean working out. <laughs> When I first started working out, I was at 54 kgs, and now I'm currently a good 75 kgs, a healthy 75 kgs, a, a thick 75, <laughs> 75 kgs, you know what I'm saying? There's some curve here and there, it's giving body. I'm very proud of the gains that I've achieved over time. Obviously, there's always going to be something that you want to change about your body that you want to improve on. You never really get to a point where you're 110% satisfied. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is how do you gain weight through your nutrition? The changes that I had to make, the supplements that I took, and what that looks like. Now, the changes that I made to my eating over the years. When I first started out at 54 kgs, I remember I went on a diet. I went plant-based. Now, that was not a good idea because going from eating meat to going plant-based allowed me to get even more leaner than I was. So I was already lean, but it just took me to another level of lean. So I had the abs and everything like... My tummy was flat. When I first started eating, I then tried to understand. I did not understand that there was dirty bulking or what that looked like. There was no specifics to what I was doing. I just ate. So I just started increasing how much I was eating. However, that was not easy. I think for a good two years, I just couldn't eat enough for the goals that I had. I struggled to eat. I had no idea what getting in your protein looked like, what kind of foods I had to eat. My idea was I just need to eat, okay? And then at that same time, I then started taking a weight, a mass gain up supplement because then I figured, okay, I want to kind of speed up the process. And I had learned that the mass gain up allows you to speed up the process. I put on a lot of weight, but I also put on a lot of fat. Now, this is what I need you to understand. If you're in a weight gain journey and you take supplements such as a mass gainer, but you're not working out because the mass gainer contains a lot of carbs, a large carb content. And so those carbs, if you're not using up those carbs, if you're not working out, you're going to gain the weight, but it won't be in the way that you would have wanted to. So at least I can say it wasn't the way that I wanted to look like. And so then having used the mass gainer, I then now had to realize that, okay, with using the mask gainer, I need to stop working out. And so at that time when I was using the mask gainer, I was training three times a week. Now going to the gym three times a week and actually working out to put on muscle are two different things, okay? The specific workouts that you need to be doing to be able to put on muscle mass. And so my training, so for example, I did a lot of cardio because I had no knowledge of what I should do in the gym. I saw a couple of workouts on the internet. You know, when you Google those workouts, I'm going to put them up here. And those are the kind of workouts that I knew of, knew of. So I would do like tons of cardio and then um, 
and then I would do like an ab workout. And so my abs were the best that they ever looked because because I was lean and not eating enough, I hardly had any fat in this part of, on this part of my body. So I was giving ab lines, I was giving all of that. And so, which was great at the time, but I wanted to put on weight because although I was giving lean all of that, I still was skinny according to what I saw myself as. And so my goal was, okay, how then do I build weight, but also trying not to build as much fat over here. But also because using a mass gainer is not an excuse to not eat. So although you can take like four or five shakes of the mass gainer, at some point it gets overwhelming. And so for me, I then stopped taking it because I just didn't like how it tasted as well as I just didn't like that because of how it tasted, it kind of suppressed my appetite for anything else. And so I did gain weight, I did gain body fat, I did gain a bit of muscle. And But because I was doing lots of cardio in the gym, I was basically killing the gains that I was putting on. So although I was taking the masculine and I was building, I killed all of those gains in the gym because I was doing tons of cardio. I was doing cardio every single time that I went to the gym. So I was training three times a week and I would do cardio for all three sessions. I had no gym plan, I had no workout plan. It was literally just vibes. Just go to the gym, see how I feel like, and that's what I was training. So, which is why I always encourage getting onto a program and plan that is structured to help you put on weight because there's specific workouts and a specific way of training that you train when you are trying to build muscle, when you are trying to gain weight. And so also understanding that I was still young and I knew that my body is still yet to develop. I was not in a rush to put on the weight. You might look at your body now and feel like, oh my God, like I'm so skinny, um, blah, blah, blah. And you just, sometimes you just need to give you, I think for the most part, give your body some time because when you get to ages such as 24, 25, when you're still 19, 20, 21, your body is not at its fully, like it's fully developed stage yet. You know what I'm saying? You're still yet to change shape. You're still yet to grow this and that. So it's not a time. So which is why I say that even in your weight gain journey, be cautious of how you go about it. Don't try to speed things up because when you try to speed things up, you're going to get to 25 and realize, actually, if I hadn't done those things and I just had remained patient, my body would look so amazing now. But because I tried to rush the process, those two things are not sitting, to, it's not mixing well and it's giving a different shape. OK, so now I'm at 60 kgs. I still felt very insecure because I just felt like I was very slim at that point and I also just still felt like I had no shape. Then we hit COVID, okay? When COVID began, I started hosting challenges on my page for workouts and all of that, which is good and it was nice and it was such a good time for me to connect with a lot of you all and that's how I started to meet a lot of you guys and I started posting on my Instagram. That's when I started documenting my fitness journey. Whether you're trying to lose or gain weight, please make sure that you are taking as tons and tons of pictures in your journey. Now, if you're trying to put on muscle, if you're trying to put on weight, not eating enough and not getting in enough protein, as well as doing five kilometer runs, long distance running, is not going to allow you to build muscle the way that you would want to. That again for me was a lot of too much cardio than I needed. And so I did start to notice that actually I'm losing weight. And so I stopped doing the runs. I stopped going for the runs on Saturday because I was losing weight. I was losing body weight. I was losing body fat, yes, but overall body weight. So I was going back to, again, being shapeless. So I stopped going for the runs. I said, cut that out. <laughs> and then that's when I started hosting the challenges that I was hosting on my Instagram page where I had so many of you guys. It was This was COVID time. So everyone was at home. So we'd come together. And I was highly stressed around that time. Let me tell you, I was going through a lot. I was in the middle of knowing that I wanted to drop out but I had no idea how I was going to do that. And so I had no, I had gone through a lot during that time as well as mentally, men, mental struggles that I'd gone through. But I just want to paint a picture for you to know that going on my fitness journey, like in our fitness journeys, it is not without everything else that we have going on around us. And those things that we have going on around us affect your fitness journey. So even though you're trying to gain weight, if you're highly stressed that and your body responds to stress as it's going to make you lose your appetite, you're going to lose weight. Do you get what I'm saying? So be patient and be kind to yourself with your fitness journey because it's a whole lot of things like your fitness journey isn't the way that it is just because you're not working out enough or just because you're not eating enough or just because you're eating too much because you resulting in eating too much or you eating too little that plays into what is happening on the other on the other end of your life what is happening around you so don't be so hard on yourself to like oh everyone seems like they're able to work out they're able to get in time for four five six days of training how am i not able to do it we all have different lifestyles and also not only different lifestyles but we also have different things that are happening around us some of us are facing a lot of mental challenges some of us are transitioning we're in a different place in our life from the next person that you're watching so as you see somebody else's journey consider that and consider your journey as your own or some of us were at home 
in our family homes with our parents so you can't exactly be like oh i'm gonna need these specific meals i'm gonna need baby spinach i'm gonna need chicken breast only but it's like that's not the situation that it's given at home you know what i'm saying at home it's giving whatever's there is what we're gonna eat so we're all training at home um there's no machines if you're trying to build muscle you don't necessarily need machines but you need resistance training now resistance training you need something that's going to challenge your muscles to force them to grow which is why when i say if you're training at home and you're just doing body weight exercises they need to be structured in a way that it challenges your muscles i don't care whether you're training at home or you're training in the gym if you're not challenging your muscles they will not grow there's different ways of challenging your muscles it's not only by lifting heavier changing the reps changing the sets what my eating looked like then is that we were eating a lot you would go to the shops and get everything because you're like we don't know how this thing is going to last fast forward i decided to drop out of school <laughs> and then these new next two years which was 2020 and 2021 is where everything changed for me so towards the end of covid which is towards the end of the year we then was still on some sort of lockdown in 20 in 2020 and 21 but when the gyms opened and i got back to the gym which is why i think i once did a video um, I don't know if it's Instagram or YouTube, but I built my glutes in the space of two years. I have been training for, actually I've been training for longer. 2018, 2019. 20, I've been training for more than four years. I just realized that right now. So when I did that video to say I wasted two years of training, wasted. It's not wasted where it's like, oh, I really wasted. Obviously, there's an understanding of whether you didn't do what was right. It took me doing what was wrong to know what was right. 2020, 2021. That was the year that changed the life of my dudes. That was the year that, and I'm going to tell you how, my training changed. So instead of going to the gym, avoiding the weight section, avoiding everything that was weights, avoiding all the machines, and just going to the, living on the elliptical machine and living on the treadmill, I stopped the treadmill i got off the treadmill i got off the elliptical machine i got off the the cardio machines and i said it's been good you know i think i pushed with you guys for two years i'm ready for the game time so i limited my cardio to once a week i was working with the 10 12 kg and the 8 kg weights just those three for a long time and that helped me build some 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 some, some good gains you know what I'm saying? Some, some good gains you know and so if you're training at home you feel like oh my god and it all just comes down to resistance if you can challenge your glutes if you can challenge your muscle to grow it's gonna grow then it clicked to me to say oh my god if i really focus on this thing and improve on my form i can actually build good gains like i can actually build the weight the muscle that i'm trying to do so now it was a thing to say how do i improve on my form how do i do a squat properly when i started to make the small changes like correcting my form while doing these exercises i had cracked the code i cracked the code on building an hourglass shape i cracked the code on building the body that i wanted to build i went from doing like 10 like i would do 10 glute exercises in one workout that is crazy okay <laughs> That is crazy. And then I would wake up the next day and try to do the same exercises. The next day. Man. And if you're able to do 10 exercises in one workout, 10, ex 10 glute exercises in one workout, I'm going to go at the... And for me, this is for me, I just wasn't training hard enough. Because when I started training hard enough, six was the maximum that I could go. So when you're training hard enough, you're not going to need 10, 12 exercises to do when you are just doing enough and you're training hard enough, you're going to notice that even after four, you can feel like, okay, I've done a really good job. I've really put in work with my kids today. Focus less on trying to do as many exercises and focus more on what exercises am I actually doing and what are they doing for my glutes. So the glute, the, the, workout, the exercises that I did that really significantly improved my glutes were these. RDLs changed the life of my glutes. Glute focus RDLs. If you don't, and the other day I asked a question in my story and I said, guys, what questions, what exercises do you guys still struggle with till this day that you're trying to learn, but you still don't get? Because I'm going to try, find a way to help you guys, to help you through your form and try to have classes and things like that that I can host, where we can actually reel in on those exercises so I can teach you. Because if you're trying to build your glutes and you don't have RDLs in there, baby, I need you to do them RDLs. Now, this isn't to say RDLs are the only exercise that's going to build your glutes, but that for me, was one exercise whereby it really changed everything about my glutes. It changed the shape, it changed the size. Yeah.
yeah so rg asked for me glute bridges for me glute bridges did a huge thing and then one exercise that i know that we hate but when i tell you that the shape of my glutes has never been the same rear foot elevated split squats rdl's glute bridges rear foot elevated split squats you could do sumo squats you could do your back squats obviously there's certain squats that are going to target your glutes much better mainly mainly focusing on hip hinge exercises i need you to leave the gym yes you're going to be tired but i want you to feel stronger when you leave that gym because sweating does not equate to having done good work sweating does not equate to having lost fat it doesn't equate to having lost weight because sweat is really just losing water weight you have lost your water weight you haven't lost body fat okay so when you go to the gym don't aim to sweat aim to get a good workout and aim to leave the gym feeling stronger aim to improve on your form because improving on your form is going to allow you to say even if you're doing four exercises you will see results if your form is good and if you're challenging your muscles if you take a look at my body right now okay we've built the quads i have never had hips in all my years of training there are no hips honey there's an illusion of hips only because I've grown my quads and my waist has slimmed down which kind of gives the illusion that I would have hips but I have never had hips I have always had hip dips which is why I want you to understand that the cracks in the knees I want you to understand that you cannot grow hips in the gym I don't care what anybody tells you you cannot grow hips in the gym let me tell you what you can do though and this is what I did I learned very quickly that I was not going to be able to build hips in the gym. So what did I do? I then worked on my quads. I worked on my legs. Mm -hmm. I worked on my glutes. I really worked on my glutes. And I worked on my waist. Not all of us are going to be able to build an hourglass figure that includes hips. Because if you have hip dips, baby, there's no hips to grow. Okay? Because that's your bone structure. That's how your bone is structured. We, I need to get back on the floor because those knees, they're not giving stallion, baby. Back up a little. Why does my forehead look like? Oh my god! Oh my god! What is happening? <laughs> With eating, your nutrition is learning. You gotta learn. You have to understand food. You have to understand how food, how your body responds to certain foods. You need to understand how your body responds to carbs. You need to understand how your body res responds to protein. How do you do that? That's not complicated. I'll be like, guys, this is what I'm eating. Here are my food videos. Here, here are my food videos. Here are some recipes that you guys can try. I preach to you guys about food. It's like, okay, cool, but like, I hear you, but what supplement though? What's the supplement? Give me the supplement. <laughs> Give me the supplement. How you grow your bum? What's the supplement? Your protein? The protein? The mass gainer? You know what I'm saying? What, which supplement? I hear the food. I hear the food talk, but Give me the supplement though. Hear me well. Hear me well. I have nothing against supplements. I take them. Tomorrow I can decide to get on creatine again. Tomorrow I can decide to take a pre-workout. However, I am conscious of the fact that supplements are there to supplement. I just am the kind of person that refuses to put a band-aid over the problem. Like if I know that my eating is crappy because I'm just not eating protein foods, I'm not going to take a whey protein, whey protein supplement. I'm going to eat protein foods. And then if I still suck, if I still not see the gains, then I'm going to add the whey protein. But I'm not going to add the whey protein when I know that really I have no chicken, no lean meat, no eggs, not, no. Bro, you are barely hitting any of your protein goals because you just do not eat any protein. I'm going to tell you what supplements will help. But I'm also going to first tell you and inform you and feed you the information that you need to know that you can get from just your foods. I don't want to give you the idea that supplements are going to replace vegetables and and fruit in your diet they're not they cannot they never will your eating is a balance of things it is not smoothie equals weight loss it is not fat burner tea equals weight loss it is not a certain supplement equals weight loss or equals weight gain that's not what, how it works it's a bind up of things a bind up of the foods that you're eating every day the calories the maximum calories maximum calories that's not just the supplement that you're taking maximum calories so that's whatever else you're eating after that you had a sandwich you had chicken you had this uh, that mixture of all those calories is what gives you the result at the end of the day okay so it's not a, there's no specific thing 
and which is why I said when I say low calorie smoothie, I'm trying to help you understand that have you understand that this is a low there's low calories in the smoothie. So if you're trying to keep your calories small or to a certain number, this would be a good smoothie to try or to include in your diet. But it all comes down to what is your maximum? How much are you actually eating all throughout the day? If you're trying to put on weight, as well as as if, as well as if you're trying to keep your body fat low, you want to be eating your protein because that's going to assist the body to be able to lose fat. It's going to assist in, be, in building lean muscle. So if you're, whether you're trying to lose weight, you need to be eating enough protein all throughout the day. So what I did is I started off um, counting my calories because I wanted to have an understanding of the foods that I'm eating right now, how much am I actually eating? The reason why I'm not going to give you my number is because it's not going to help you. Okay, I'm not going to tell you how many calories because that's not going to help you. What's going to help you is for you to go calculate your number. So I'm going to tell you where you can go calculate your number. And that is here. You're going to use a calc calorie calculator and whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to gain weight, you're going to put in the right things in there. And then you're going to calculate what that looks like for you. Because I'm going to help you for me to tell you my numbers because our bodies are not going to be the same. And I don't want you to do a cheat, try to aim for what I aim for because we're not all starting from the same place. I'm not having tons of processed foods. I'm still going to be wiser with the food options that I do. So I'm going to cook more. I'm going to have meals, home-cooked meals more. It's not the problem about the burger that you're having. It's how the burger is made that is the issue. Because behind there, you don't see that the burger was dumped in tons and tons of oil that has been sitting on that thing for like six days. And it's being dumped in there. And they have a nice looking burger. It's looking all juicy. And then they top it up with some nice cheese. And I'm saying, mm, tastes good. I can taste it in my mouth right now. You don't see that. And uh, I don't mind a little dirt sometime here and there. I don't mind that little burger. I'm going to have it one or two times. However, you're going to do better when you make that burger yourself, which... I know we don't like because we like to have everything done for us. I know that. The burger that you make at home and the burger that you, is made outside is going to be two different things. And I'm not saying avoid the one that's made outside. I started, eating, I started having a lot of smoothies in my diet because, because I was struggling with eating. I knew that I need to find a way to make myself eat. Why am I not eating enough? I don't have time. I'm stressed most of the time. So how can I make that easier for myself? Have the things readily available in the house. Have the foods already readily available in the house. I was eating four meals a day. So that would look like breakfast. I'd have my oatmeal and add some fruit in there. Lunch, I'll probably have leftovers, which was probably chicken from last night. And like I had not a lot of lentils and then I'll have like rice or sometimes I'll just do a sandwich. I'll probably have like pasta for dinner. And then after that, I'll probably have a smoothie. Or sometimes I'll do breakfast oatmeal, lunch smoothie, dinner, that's where I cook. And then after dinner smoothie, because smoothies are very simple to make. So I'm only cooking twice a day, but I have to have the four meals. So that's how I structure my meals. And so I was eating like that for a long time and that's how I was really able to build good weight as well as the training aspect of it, not doing tons of cardio while trying to put on weight because if you're doing tons of cardio, you're probably most likely killing your gain. So now getting into the supplements that I took at that time. So initially I started off taking a mass gainer. I took the mass gainer, like I said, I stopped taking it for like after a month because it became overwhelming for me. And then I got into whey protein. I took whey protein for probably max a month. And I think I stopped taking it because I realized that my way I was lacking was really because I just didn't know what protein foods to eat. So because of my lack of knowledge in that, I just think I just thought, let me just take a protein. But it's like, it's not a difficult thing to know. Like knowing what foods to eat for your protein, that's not a challenge. I'm going to list all the protein foods that you can eat right here for you. And you can pick and try to include a protein in all your meals. You're done. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then when you add the weight, if you still are lacking, after adding in these these foods then you can add the supplement in and it can it can assist then i took creatine now i took creatine over i think it's been over a year i started taking creatine in 2020 um last year was what 2022 i started taking creatine 2022 march mm. oh creatine love of my life oh if you thought you couldn't get gains creatine said hold my cup <laughs> you see now i'm taking the creatine matching that up with my workouts matching that up with my nutrition and boom thick you couldn't tell me anything at that point mm. however i stopped taking it because it really affected my skin a supplement can be good but we're not all built the same so although a supplement is good and it has is and creatine is the most researched supplement in the world and so which is why um, most people lean towards creatine although a supplement is good and it can give me the benefits and all of that what it says it's going to do it can my body can disagree with the supplement 
my body can respond negatively to the supplement you have to be drinking enough water it's not the kind of thing where it's like you take creatine and you're drinking like a cup of water a day what and even if you're not taking creatine and you're having just a cup of water a day don't piss me off please go drinking water <laughs> and you're trying to build what you you lose your gains after stop taking creatine i never lost any of my gains after stop, stopping creatine uh it's still giving thick you know i'm currently at 75 kgs my goals now have changed because now i'm trying to reduce my body fat and the way that i managed to keep my body fat percentage low being man i'm saying low because having gained this amount of muscle or having gained this amount of weight over time that was not without putting on body fat like that's not something you can avoid i have put on body fat during the time but i've managed to keep it low the way that i did that was not skipping on my cardio I still got my cardio day every week and as well as understanding this when you are on a program and you have a program blah 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 that plan that you're following your workouts that you're doing four times a week are not the only thing that's going to affect you, that's going to affect your results if you lead a life whereby you're seated 90 percent of the time you're going to the gym for about 30 minutes that will affect what your results look like at the end of the day do you get what i'm saying so although i'm training four days a week and i'm on a program Although I'm training four days a week and I'm on a program, I'm still trying to do a lot. I'm still trying to lead an active life. Like that's basically what I did. I hope that gives you guys an idea of what my journey has looked like. And so really, I would say I've been training for six years. In your journey, don't think of it as one day you're going to hit the goal and you're going to be like so satisfied. It's like, oh my God, I don't have to work out every day of my life. That's not what it is, baby. That's not what it is. Which is why in your training, in your nutrition, how you're eating, how you're working out, find balance because when you find balance you never have to stop and start i still look at my body right now i'm like what have i been doing in the last six years have i even have i even walked into a gym have i been working out like what have i been doing in the last six years because i don't see it yeah so the body dysmorphia is is is, is it, it comes with the work you know what I'm saying? it's a side it's a little package on the side but you got to take it with the good um yeah that's been my journey guys i hope this has been helpful to anybody that is watching thank you for getting to this part of the video i hope this helps your journey please don't forget to subscribe if you're new here i post a lot more videos on my workouts i would like to do a lot more lifestyle on this channel but i don't know how you guys respond to that stuff because i haven't seen the you know what i'm saying i don't know if we like lifestyle on, to, on, on this video on this channel but thank you so much for watching uh, my battery just died i appreciate you guys so so much if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video Mwah. I'm tired.